So I am perpetually intrigued by the things that trigger people on cruise ships, the thing that make them lash out on social media and complain. And well, today, and I promise this, this story doesn't suck. I promise. It's about a lady upset, upset with Carnival Cruise Line over a vacuum cleaner over a vacuum cleaner. Also, I've uh, discovered a new cruise experience that we could all partake in, but it doesn't seem like my cruise experience. I want to ask you about it. And we've got big news that Carnival Cruise Line's fleet is getting bigger. A, a new ship in dry dock with another ship in dry dock and the other ship in dry dock is causing some controversy. Do they hate the movies? Are they removing the IMAX theater? Uh, yeah, we, we got a lot of talk about, plus, plus we are the world. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I am your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views. It's for your face. It's for your face on a Sunday, February the 4th. 2024. Happy new day of the week, everybody, or happy last day of the week, everybody, whichever way you roll. There's a lady who recently cruised on the Carnival Breeze, and she is a self-proclaimed germaphobe. She's like the Howie Mandel of cruising, and she outlines in a complaint her approach to cruising. So because she's such a germaphobe, as soon as she enters into her cruise cabin, she immediately starts to clean stuff. They go right for the storage. They're using the Clorox wipes. They're cleaning down all the storage. Then they strip all of the bedding off of the bed that they're going to sleep in during their cruise. They strip it off, and I, I'm not really sure what they do with it, but they do away with it because they brought their own bedding. Look, we've talked about overpacking. Never once did I think to tell somebody not to bring your own. They bring their own bedding and, and all that's good. All that's good. They, they, they tell the room steward, look, Hey, we've removed the gratuities, uh, for everybody, I guess, but here's $20. Don't come in our cabin. We don't want that. But the thing that she's most upset about is she does not have access immediately to a vacuum cleaner. She, she was on the breeze. She told the room steward, don't bother us. Here's $20. I removed your tip. I need a vacuum cleaner right now for the next 15 minutes. And well, the, the poor room steward, he's like, well, they only give me one vacuum cleaner. I can't give you my vacuum cleaner. I'm still doing, st I can't. no, no, the policy is we're not, we don't give guests vacuum cleaners. And uh, well, she's mad. She's mad and she's uh, calling Carnival out over this policy that won't allow her to have a vacuum cleaner. And she's, she's done right into the brand ambassador, John Heald, complaining about it. And he basically, you know, backed up the cabin steward and the policy of the cruise ship. They don't give out vacuum cleaners. They just have one. Um, yeah. What do you think? Is Carnival wrong on this one? Should anybody who requests a vacuum cleaner on embarkation day, should they be given a vacuum cleaner? Should they, you know, it's a whole thing whether or not you want somebody coming into your cabin. The cruise lines, it's twofold. Of course, they want to come into your cabin and clean it, keep it as sanitary as possible. And then the second part of the twofold, the, the second fold, as it were, is they want to make sure you're not in trouble, that you're not in any physical danger or that, you know, something naturally hasn't happened to you to cause you to be unwell. So they have health check. That's part of, I don't know if you knew that. That's what happens when your cabin steward not only are they you know cleaning your deal but they're also checking your deal and uh for health it's a tough one there's definitely people that are you know super concerned about getting sick and all of that stuff but is this a reasonable request what do you think leave a comment below cruise news story number two and i'm putting this under the would you want to do this uh you know category this is a new cruise experience coming to San Juan, Puerto Rico in 2025. We're getting word that Sea Cloud will be homeporting their newest luxury cruise yacht, the Sea Cloud Spirit, 
in San Juan. And here it is, this luxury sailing yacht. It has 69 cabins, 136 passengers, 85 crew members. You can get on it for a little over $5,000 per person, and it looks nice, it's luxurious. You know, a lot of times you get questions about luxury yachts and river cruises, and again, to me, this seems drastically different than ocean cruising, at least the cruising that I like. Even like river cruises seem drastically different than the type of cruising I like. But uh, of course, it's not all about me throwing this out there because San Juan is easy to get to, and I've had other people ask about these type of experience. But what do you think, as somebody who's part of the cruising community, somebody who watches these cruising type videos, the ones that I do, uh, is this your jam or, or is this not your jam? Uh, leave a comment below. Now we gotta swing back around and talk about Carnival's newest cruise ship that's just now entering the fleet. And then we have to talk about one of Carnival's older cruise ships is getting refurbed right now, trying to get fixed, causing some controversy. But before we do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you miss out on zero zero episodes and there's a lot of episodes so I, somebody's surprised they're like oh you do more than one i do a lot of shows during the week and uh like i said this one hopefully it didn't suck that's a callback to the vacuum story uh, hopefully you're enjoying it I, i'll tell you what i did enjoy yesterday at the house uh, we watched a documentary on netflix about the making of the epic song in the 198 i think it's 1983 we are the world and if you were somebody who was born in the 1970s or, you know, this hit right in my sweet spot. I think I was 12 or 13 years old when this thing came out. A lot of the pop stars of the day. And as somebody who likes to mimic voices, they gave me a whole song there that had all these voices that I could mimic. I love, love, loved it, but I never really knew how it all came together. And now this documentary on Netflix is there and it was really fascinating. So if you're from that era, if you like that song or if, if that is some part of your cultural memory, I would highly recommend I would highly recommend that documentary on Netflix. We are famously there was uh, you know Willie Nelson was in it, country music singer. There was another famous country music singer that walked out of the session. I didn't know that walked out of the session. Okay, let's talk about Carnival's newest cruise ship. The Costa Firenze is now in a dry dock in Cadiz, Spain, getting ready to be uncostified and carnival carnivalized, carnival trans transformed, trans made over. Uh, this is Carnival's 27th ship in their fleet. Of course, the ship is coming from Costa, which is a sister brand in the Carnival Corporation. And uh, they're gonna make it all, uh, not all, but some Carnival, like it's gonna keep this old funnel. It's gonna be Carnival Italian style. And then after it gets fixed up there at the shipyard in Cadiz, it will be, I don't know if they're doing a transatlantic, but eventually it will be making its way to the West Coast to do year round West Coast sailings. Congratulations, Carnival, your fleet just got one bigger and uh, more options for people to cruise on the West Coast. Are you gonna be on this cruise ship? Is this something that interests you? Leave a comment below. Now you may not know that, that the Firenze was not the only Carnival cruise ship in Cadiz in a dry dock getting stuff done to it. We also have the Carnival Vista over there in the same dry dock in Cadiz, Spain. And the Vista's had some propulsion issues. So I'm assuming they're working on those propulsion issues, but they're also doing some renovation to that cruise ship. And a nasty rumor got put out there by somebody on social media saying that they would be taking away the IMAX theater on the Carnival Vista. If you've been on any of these uh, Vista class cruise ships, I think they all have them. I know the Vista for sure and the Horizon. I've, I've seen movies on both of those cruise ships in the IMAX. I love it. As somebody who loves movies, I love the fact that they have this huge IMAX theater there. I, you know, and so a little bit when I heard this rumor, I was like, well, that that would suck. I don't think I would like that. But uh, look, it's not true. I'm here to be a truth teller for you today. It was addressed by Carnival Brand Ambassador. He scolded. He scolded some, you know, uh, some influencers. And then he also gave some praise to some influencers. It was cryptic. And so I'm not sure who he was talking about. But uh, either way, the, the final message is that it's just a rumor and it's an incorrect rumor. Vista not losing their IMAX theater. 
the, the thing's never really full when I'm in there, so it is a question. You know, do they did they lose the IMAX on the horizon for the trampoline? How's the trampoline part doing? Are people going? Is anybody going to the IMAX and is anybody going to the trampoline park on this Vista class of cruise ships for Carnival? I, I try to hit the IMAX any chance I get. Uh, what about you? Leave a comment below. Now let me hit you with a quick programming note. Make sure you're tuned in and subscribe to the channel because tomorrow I'll be releasing part of my conversation that I had with Derek from Island Time. He's been on the Jubilee, he's been on the Icon, and uh, we put together a little presentation tomorrow about if you cruise with the small kids, uh, who should you cruise with? And that conversation is just from a larger conversation, an over one hour conversation that we had. That full conversation will be on the La Lita Loca Cruise Podcast channel. I've got it separated over there to another channel so you don't get the big hour jammed in with all of these 10 to 20 minute presentations. So make sure you follow the podcast channel on YouTube or follow the podcast wherever you get podcasts, but a really insightful conversation about somebody who just came off the world's largest cruise ship. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Make sure you check that out. I think, I think that's it. Boom. That's your cruise news. That's your updates. That's your Sunday edition. How's everybody doing out there today? What do you eat for Sunday dinner? I'm already hungry for some Sunday. We don't have a set Sunday dinner, but uh, it's rainy and yucky here. I could eat some pot roast. I don't know. What's your Sunday dinner? Uh, thank you so much for checking out the show. Hit the like button. Tony for La Lido Look. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise news. Cruise news. Cruise news. It's over.